Today we're going to talk about socks, cells, and laundry. So a cell is like a laundry basket. It has holes. Some things get through. Some things don't. Some things get through with a lot of help. Some things get through with a little bit of help. Some things can't fit through. We call this a semi-permeable membrane. Inside that cell is some very important machinery. It's DNA. It's the code of life. DNA is the code that tells a muscle cell what to do and how to be. DNA is what tells a bacteria how to do bacteria things. DNA is the messages that must be read in order for things to happen inside a cell. No matter if you're a single-celled organism, like a bacteria, Bacteria have only one cell. Or a multi-celled organism like a cat with multiple cells. Or even a virus. You rely on DNA to get your information read and carried out. These are the instructions that you want to be put into action. You need a code reader. DNA. It stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It is the code that tells our cells what to do. It's a combination of four simple letters. A, T, G, and C. Now A goes with T and C goes with G. And these letters actually stand for certain names, but don't worry about them right now. All you need to know is there are four letters that mix up to make the code for DNA. Now if you're a single-celled unicellular organism like say a bacteria, your DNA is just kept inside the cell, just hanging out in the bottom of the cell, loose and free, just not organized exactly, just kind of floating there in the cytoplasm. It works. It's not very organized, but it works. Now, if you're a multicellular organism like a cat, your DNA gets to have its own room. Your DNA goes in a second laundry basket that goes into the big laundry basket and you have a laundry basket inside a laundry basket. This adds an extra layer of protection for that DNA because remember, that DNA is critical to the functioning of that cell. If something happens to that code and the code gets messed up, then the cell won't function the way it's supposed to. A eukaryotic cell, a multicellular organism, these are organisms that have protected DNA inside a nucleus. That membrane inside, that's holding the DNA, that's called the nucleus. So the DNA of a multicellular organism is protected inside a second layer of membrane. You've got your outer cell membrane, but then you have an inner layer called the nuclear membrane, which surrounds the nucleus. Now DNA is the code of life. I've said that a hundred times but it's also the recipe for making proteins. Proteins are molecules used for building things. Anything that the cell wants to build, most of the time it's going to build it out of a protein. For example, myosin is a contractile protein in muscle fibers. Have you ever heard that meat is a good source of protein? Got some fish here. This is a really good source of protein because of all the myosin in the muscle fibers. Meat is muscles, and muscles are meat. Muscles are good, right? Everybody likes muscles. Muscles! Well, this is a muscle cell. Muscle cell, hello. All right, so this muscle cell, when it contracts, when you flex your muscles, those muscle cells flex their myosin, and their myosin goes bunching together, and it squeezes and makes them shorter. And that's what pulls your arm back towards you when you're flexing your muscle. Those are the myosin proteins that are made in the cell. Now, making this protein requires a machine. We have the instructions, that's the DNA, but we need some kind of machine. What kind of machine are we going to use? Are we going to use a toaster? No. We're going to use something called a ribosome. The ribosome. Ribosomes are code readers. Now, in the nucleus of the cell, we pull out the DNA. 
This is the code. But the DNA is too important for it to leave the nucleus. The DNA must be copied before it can be used in the new machine called the ribosome. So we make a copy of the, of the DNA. Making a copy of the DNA, we're lining up, we're building a new version of the DNA in what's called a messenger RNA. So the messenger RNA is going to be just like the DNA with a little signature on it. It's made with some different molecules that make it clear that it's a copy and not the original. The messenger RNA travels out of the nucleus and it meets up in the cytoplasm with the machine, the ribosome. The ribosome comes in two parts. It's got a large subunit, boop, and it's got a small unit, boop. And as it's put together, the messenger RNA travels through the machine. And as it's traveling through the machine, on the other side, it's building. It's building a protein. Now, building a protein looks something like this. Every time the messenger RNA goes through the ribosome, it adds a new piece of what's supposed to be in that protein. You end up with a long chain of molecules that need to go together and then those molecules need to be folded. Knowing how to fold a protein is really very important because if you fold a protein one way, you end up with one type of functioning unit. If you have a protein that's folded in an entirely different way, then you have something that works very differently. One of our emerging areas of science research is understanding how to develop protein folding, how to know how those proteins are going to fold. As the messenger RNA goes through the ribosome, it's building a protein along the other end. And what is this one going to make? Looks like this time it made a hat. Have a great day, guys.